Hi, Carl here for Pro VTV, and today Canon have launched three new fixed lens 4K camcorders. They've got the XA40, XA50, and XA55, which is this one right here. Now these fit in the middle of their current range. Currently, you've got the XA11 and 15, and the XA30 and XA35. Those are their 1080p fixed lens camcorders, and they look quite similar to this physically. Then they've got their 4K camcorders. They've got the XF405, which looks similar to the XA30 and XA35, although internally it's a very different beast. It's got 4K 50p, it's got IP streaming, dual pixel autofocus, all of these very advanced professional features. And then they've got their flagship model, the XF705, which is a completely different beast ergonomically and internal recordings wise. It's a very, very capable professional fixed lens camcorder at the highest end, pretty much. So these new cameras fit in between the XA35 and the XF400. So these bring 4K to a more entry level space below the XF405. So we've got the XA40, then we've got the XA50 and 55. So let's take a look at what's new. So let's start with the XA40. If you're familiar at all with their current cameras, the XA30 and 35, the XA40 is gonna feel very familiar to you. They share an awful lot in common. They've got a half inch size sensor, they've got a 20 times zoom range, and they record in MP4 files. The big difference though, is that the XA40 can now do 4K recording. And that's brilliant, of course, because you get 4K, you get that higher resolution recording for when you want it. But it actually has a lot of benefits, even if you're only interested in 1080p. It will give you sharper images across the board, because if you're in 1080p mode, it's going to be downsampling from a 4K sensor, which should give you better image quality overall. And it will give you an extra zoom range as well, because you can now crop into that 4K image down to a 1080p native crop which effectively doubles the focal length of your lens. So rather than having a 20 times zoom range like it is in 4K, in 1080p, you'll effectively have a 40 times zoom range. So even if you're not interested in 4K at all, the XA40 should have some significant improvements over the XA30 for you, even if you're only interested in 1080p. In fact, they are so similar that I wouldn't be surprised at all if Canon now discontinue the XA30 and 35 in favor of the XA40. Certainly any customers looking at these cameras now, I'd strongly recommend you look at the XA40 over the XA30 or 35. But being the entry level 4K camcorders, it does have some disadvantages to the XA50 and 55. Firstly, it only comes in a HDMI model, the XA40. There's no SDI on here, at least here in the UK. It also doesn't have that dual pixel autofocus technology that you get on the 50, 55 and cameras above it in Canon's range. Now, this is and it isn't a big deal. I mean, it does control in exactly the same way as the dual pixel autofocus. The control system is exactly the same, the tracking, the face autofocus, everything like that. So from an ergonomics point of view, you're gonna notice very little difference. The difference is gonna be in the actual performance. It's being a hybrid autofocus system, it's just not quite as professional and reliable as the dual pixel autofocus we see on their other cameras. And it'll be more in tune with and more in line with what we see from some of the competitors like Sony and Panasonic manufacturers like that that also use this hybrid autofocus technology. So if you want the dual pixel, you're gonna to have to step up to the 50 and the 55. And the 40 also doesn't have ND filters, which might also be a really big deal for some people. If you shoot outside a lot, you are gonna be interested in having the ND filters built into the camera like you get on the 50 and 55, and you don't get that on the XA40. Okay, let's talk about the XA50 and the XA55. So the difference between those two models is purely the SDI port. We see this on a lot of releases from Canon where they release two simultaneous models, one with HDMI only, which is the XA50, and one with SDI and HDMI, which is the XA55. And you might want that SDI if you're gonna be doing multi-camera work, if you're gonna be taking a signal into a vision mixer, anything like that, you probably want the SDI connection that you get with the XA55. So the big difference between the XA50 and 55 and the XA40 is the one inch sized sensor, the largest sensor that you get on the 50 and the 55. 
is actually the same sensor as the XF405, and so you should be getting very similar image quality. And it will be a big step up over the XA40. You're gonna get shallow depth of field, you're gonna get better dynamic range, you're gonna get better noise performance, better low light, just a better image overall. And because of the dual pixel autofocus that you now get, you're gonna be able to keep your subject reliably in focus, even with that shallower depth of field that comes from a larger sensor. The disadvantage, of course, of having a larger sensor is that the lens can't be quite as long a focal length. So rather than the 20 times you get on the XA40, you now get a 15 times zoom range on the XA50 and 55. But of course, if you drop down to 1080p, you can double that just like on the XA40 because of the 4K resolution, you can crop into it to get effectively a 30 times zoom range in 1080p. So at first glance, the XA50 and 55 and the XF400 and 405 seem very similar on paper. I mean, they've got the same physical construction pretty much. I mean, the XA1555 is that little bit slimmer, but pretty much they're the same. They've got the same 15 times zoom range on them. They've got the same one inch size sensor. So what does set these two model ranges apart? I'm probably gonna do a whole video on this subject once we get our hands on a final release version of the XA1555 and can spend a little bit more time with them. But just now, the first things that spring out to mind is that this doesn't have 4K 50p, whereas the 400 and the 405 does. And that's brilliant both for 50p delivery in 4K, but also for that little bit of extra slow motion when you're shooting in 25p in 4K. You get that half speed slow motion, which I do find myself using an awful lot for B-roll, for events, for things like that. Having a little bit of slow motion while still having that 4K resolution is fantastic. And you get that on the XF400 and 405, but not here. You also get more slow motion in 1080p. On those cameras, you can do up to 100 frames a second in 25p, so that gives you a quarter speed slow motion, whereas on the 1555, you're limited to 50 frames a second in 1080p for half speed slow motion. You also get networking capabilities with the 400 and 405. They're actually very advanced cameras when it comes to networking. You can do FTP streaming, you can do IP streaming, all of this sort of advanced networking capabilities for live production and for news gathering, which you don't get here on the 50 and 55. And the screen is very different. The screen on the 400 and 405 is much larger and higher resolution. And so that's nice to be able to see your image better when you're out and about filming, but also it really helps when you're controlling the camera with the touch screen both for the menus and for controlling the dual pixel autofocus. Because of course, remember, you need to touch on what you want on to be in focus on that touchscreen. And so a larger touchscreen really helps with that. So that's been our first look at the new 4K camcorders from Canon, the XA40, the XA50, and the XA55. And we're gonna, of course, be doing a full review of each of these cameras once we get our hands on a final finished version of the cameras and we can spend a little bit more time with them. This is a pre-production unit. And so we have it for a very limited time. We can't really go out and do, about and do too much filming with it. So once we get those final models and the final and the, the units are actually shipping, we can spend a little bit more time with them and go into a bit more depth. And I'm really looking forward to doing that and spending a bit more time with these cameras because I think Canon have done a great job here. They've really fleshed out their lineup to give options for each level user in the industry. Currently, you've got the XA11 and XA15 and the XA30 and XA35 for the entry level 1080p only models. You've then got the XA40 for those entry level users, but the, the ones that want 4K recording. Then you've got the XA1555 and the XF400 and 405, and you can choose between those two ranges depending on whether or not you need the more professional features of the XF400 and 405. And then on the flagship end, you've got the XF705 as a main flagship production TV camera workhorse. So, what do you think of the new models from Canon? Let me know down in the comment section down below. And if you want to pre-order one of these, of course, just head over to our website at prov.co.uk or just get in touch with our sales team. Their contact information is down in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.